Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do our April the 21st Spiritual Principle a Day in a Meditation. I hope you're doing well this morning. Let's go ahead and get into that screen. The title of today's meditation, Communicating Respect. Communicating Respect. It says, when we regard one another with respect, we open the door to a different kind of communication. That comes from the Living Clean book, chapter seven, principles, practice, and perspective. Outside in a, in our specific cultures or neighborhoods, respect was often something we demanded of others or felt we were entitled to based on our status in the community or our egos. Our communication around respect had one purpose, getting our own way. What mattered was how superbly articulate we were about our beliefs, our willingness to go to battle for every one of our opinions, and the sheer loudness of our voice. And if we weren't among those with status or volume, we usually gave in to their demands. Inside NA, practicing respect as a spiritual principle has nothing to do with getting our own way or handing over our power to those who command it. Regarding others with respect includes paying attention to how we are communicating with our voice, facial expressions, body language, or our silence. And then honestly examining how people hear and respond to us. If I approach another member with my claws out, one member shared, I shouldn't be surprised if they react by slashing back. Ideally, Practicing respect results in more inclusivity of opinions and more equality in participation. Communicating our respect prioritizes listening over speaking, our common welfare over selfishness. We try to make space for others rather than cutting them out. NNA, respect breeds trust, safety, and well being, not fear, fragility and oversized eagles. This perspective takes plenty of work and plenty of unlearning. For one thing, we must work against our own feelings of superiority, inferiority, or indifference. A member who's been around for a while described their experience. Working the NA steps has made my own beliefs less fragile. I don't have to defend them as fiercely as I did before, and I don't have to express my opinions about everything. Just because someone else's or the group's opinion is different from ours doesn't mean they're wrong. And if they are wrong, is this a battle that must be fought or can we make peace and be a part of a solution? How am I communicating respect to my fellow NA members today? How am I being respectful to the meeting, to the group's conscience, to the traditions, to NA as a whole? Let's take a moment of silence followed by the we version of serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Just for today, please and thank you. What a meditation. What a meditation. Oh my goodness. Talking about communicating respect. I mean, every, every paragraph here, hits the nail right on the head because it's talking about that at at some point in time, the ideal of respect for us, right? Before we got here and learned that everyone has an opportunity to share, that everyone 
uh, has the opportunity to listen to others share and that everyone has an opportunity to have their higher power or lack of higher power respected. This isn't a debate or some religious movement. You can come in with your own higher power and you can share giving evidence of your relationship. Now, I, I wouldn't want you to try to convert me, right? And I would definitely not try to use my share to convert other people. However, if I want to talk about my relationship with my higher power, I'm as it relates to my recovery, key point, I'm, I'm totally able to do so. This is the first place where I actually came and had a seat at the table and nobody could tell me to get up and leave. Where actually, when we talk about everyone has an opinion, that my opinion was my opinion and I didn't have to put your opinion down nor expect you to lift mine up. I could have a seat at the table. Oh, you can tell I'm getting excited about this meditation. You can tell I'm getting excited about this meditation, right? Because I this was the first place, Narcotics Anonymous was the first place where I was taught equality. I'm talking about where your skin didn't matter your hair type didn't matter. If you had good hair, or bad hair, everybody had a seat at the table. You had light skin or dark skin or very white skin. It didn't really matter because everyone had a seat at this table because we realized that we were all addicts desperate to learn another way to live. The playing field was evened out completely when I got to Narcotics Anonymous. And don't think I didn't get a hunch up on my back sometimes about certain situations. I did. I did. But I was quickly checked. I was quickly put down to my right size. You got a seat at the table. You don't run the table, Mighty Stream. You have a seat at the table. You don't run it. Nor do you take longer than your equal amount of time to share. We'll listen to you, but we're not going to listen to you and you take us hostage unless we've invited you to come here and be the speaker. You need to figure out what our time limit is. If we say at the beginning of the meeting that you can share as long as you want to, then that's what you do. But if we say that each person has four minutes, five minutes, seven minutes, or 10 minutes to share, you start wrapping that up one minute before your time runs out. So we don't have to embarrass you because we will. You're not bigger, but you're not smaller. And that's what I learned in Narcotics Anonymous. This is the first place where I began to learn to communicate respectfully. Because when it talks about the only thing that we knew about respect was what we wanted to demand that other people give us. You're going to respect me. And if you don't respect me, I'm going to make you respect me. So if my status can't make you respect me, my voice will make you respect me because I will speak louder than you. I will talk loud, badder than you. Oh, I can vibe with this one. Isn't that a doggone shame? We have the uttermost audacity to think that we're entitled to respect just because we say we are. That's not how it works. And it's not how it works. In Narcotics Anonymous, I figured out, oh, I'm, I'm, I can respect others, right? Instead of demanding it, I can respect others because I'm respectable, <laughs> right? That's a nice twist. I can respect others. I can honor others because I'm honorable and I'm respectable not because I get to demand that they give it to me. It's not even about them giving it to me. It's about what I can give to them. Just like they gave it to me when I came to the program, I was like, oh, they didn't dog me because of my, my giving voice to me not wanting to hear about everybody's higher power and if it's religious. 
uh, it's spiritual and not a religious program, but it seemed religious to me because everybody wanted to tell you the name of your higher power. And I just felt like it was so religious and nobody dogged me. No one dogged me. A couple of people pulled me aside and let me know what was going on. Right. That that was the way those people shared. Not everyone that Narcotics Anonymous is not like that. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I began to take my attitude off of my shoulders. And I became willing to start communicating. Right? And understanding that it takes a lot of work. To communicate respect. Instead of disrespect. Communicating disrespect was my go-to. It took a lot of work to realize that that was based in a character defect of fear. And I didn't have to let that happen anymore. I didn't have to make a total behind out of myself in public anymore. I didn't have to flip over tables in meetings anymore. Because I didn't like the way someone was sharing or that they were staring at me when they were sharing like they were talking to me. Now, far be it that they could have just found some kind of comfort in looking at me, right? Uh, a neutral face, which I find that hard to believe, <laughs> but it could have been. Can you imagine someone share, you're sharing and you're looking at someone because they seem non-judgmental and then all of a sudden they start screaming at you? Uh, uh, to stop looking at, at them and trying to point them out. And you can't even continue with your share anymore. All you can do is take a moment of silence and pass, right? Moment of silence in the serenity pay, prayer and pass it on to the next person. Can you imagine? I was an absolute fool. I, I, I don't even, I, I'm embarrassed to even talk about it. I'm past it now. But just to, to think about the way I conducted myself before recovery and early recovery. Yeah, I'll take this version 30 years later any day. My name is Mighty Stream. I've enjoyed talking to you today about this topic of communicating respect. I want for you today to be thinking about how you don't communicate respect. Because once you deal with that and admit that you do that and understand what character defect it operates out of, fear, anger, resentment, the main three, once you figure out where it's coming from, now when you see yourself going that route, you can say, not today. Today, I'm going to sit my tail here and I'm going to just sit and listen. Even if I can't sit and listen and nod my head because I, I don't agree, right? I can sit here and listen and be neutral. If I can't add anything to the atmosphere of recovery in an obvious fashion, I can at least sit here quietly and listen respectfully. I don't have to roll my eyes. I don't have to hiss. Can you believe that? Mm, mm, mm. No, I don't have to do any of the, those antics. Just sit and listen. Because your day is coming. Your turn is coming. Your 15 minutes of fame are coming. And you're going to want people to communicate respect to you by allowing you to share without feeling judged. That's what we want to do today. And one other thing we want to do today. We want to have a beautiful day on purpose. I know you can do it. I plan on doing it. I can't wait to get out here with my boys and move all of our big trash to the front because they're about to do a major spring cleaning for the neighborhood here. And I'm, I'm just excited about having, you know, this interaction with them. Outdoors, breathing fresh air. I'm excited about that. Have a beautiful day on purpose. I plan to.